Hey, y'all. I'm determined to do my uh, diary while I make my dinner. Today, I've been uh, pretty sick. Uh, getting better, but still just not feeling well. Um, been thinking a lot. Just so many messages, I just have to stop reading them. But a lot of people, of course, um, seems like there's so much uh, anger from a lot of people who are like, oh, well, if you didn't wake up screaming and <laughs> remembering what happened, then it's like it doesn't matter. I think you have to understand that um, there's a lot of stress involved in being set on fire. I know I was in shock at the time the police came and no, they never came back. I've had a lot of people asking that question. I was never questioned um, and he was never questioned any more than beyond, um, than, than while the um, ambulance was there. And then he left in an ambulance too because he had burns on his um, forearms, but like first degree burns. <laughs> he immediately tried to act like a hero because I think he's accustomed to that. I think that what we need to realize with narcissistic abuse is that I believe they truly believe what they're saying. You know, I'm not a mental health professional, but talking to him, he's a hundred percent, I mean, a hundred percent conviction in what he says and it's so un, it just seems unwell, you know, not just for anyone to to say a lie and, and, and believe it. I just today realized that um, when I woke up and he was telling me what happened and what a terrible accident, how much he loved me and, you know, oh my gosh, now I see the light. I'm never, I'm not gonna be like a jerk. I'm not gonna complain about money that you spend to pay the bills, you know, or, um, you know, disappear. I'm not going to complain about any of that. I see the light. That's love bombing that I hear people talk about all the time when they're talking about narcissistic abuse. It's just love bombing on a really grand level. And I was so accustomed to that and so conditioned for it. And you can tell right now I'm not feeling well. My friend Mandy says, you know, you went through a lot telling your story and I was already feeling not kind of unwell, but I also think that sometimes psychologically and, and just mentally you get worn down and that really opens you up to physical illness. And I think that narcissistic abuse opens you up to physical illness. I've seen it, like my face is puffy when you look at old pictures. I'm gaining weight. I just don't, I look unwell because that same thing is happening inside of me before I was burned and now I can see it and understand it. But when it's happening to you, you might not understand. So the only thing I think we can do is try to listen to the people around us. But for me, I was ashamed uh, in a way. I don't think I would have used that word back then, but I definitely didn't tell anybody I got punched in the eye. I didn't tell anybody about the aggravated battery. I didn't tell anybody these things because people would say, what are you crazy? And yeah, I think you, I mean, yeah, you're, you're under their spell and you don't want to share. But if you don't share, that isolation opens you up to further abuse and programming because narcissistic abuse, emotional abuse, having someone uh, disappear all the time and, and play on your fear of abandonment and complain when you're struggling just to pay the bills that they're using, they're keeping the other money because they need it to go out to the bar or go shopping. Um, you know, that's not the way it said at the time, but that's what was happening. I'm struggling to pay the bills and being questioned about where all the money goes. Financial abuse is abuse. So today I can't even go into any more story time. I just want to tell you that if you've been watching me and you're thinking that you're in the same situation, 
you need to understand how dangerous it really is. Not everybody is going to harm you like this. That's not what I mean to say. But I do mean to say that isolation sets you up for a situation like this. And I do feel all kinds of ways about it. Like, you know, I shouldn't have trusted him again. I shouldn't have believed him. But I was a faithful wife. And um, I believed that God had shown a way to make pain out of, no purpose out of pain. You know, this accident has happened, but at least he's seen the light. And I'm finally going to be able to relax because that feeling of anxiety that was associated with what he might do or what he might say, or is he gonna disappear? That was miserable. So this is October 28th, 2024, and I'm determined to be heard, so I'm going to continue making these videos. But right now, I'm gonna have some chicken soup and lay down. For everyone who has sent super thanks, and um, who have joined as members. I appreciate you so much. I will um, do shout outs for you tomorrow. Just right now, I gotta lay down. <laughs> I love y'all. Remember that whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. <laughs>